For too long, the issue of self-deception has been the realm of deep-thinking philosophers, academics, and scholars working on the central questions of the human sciences. The public remains generally unaware of the issue. That would be fine, except that self-deception is so pervasive that it touches every aspect of life. What touches is perhaps too gentle a word to describe its influence. Self-deception actually determines one's experience in every aspect of life. The extent to which it does that, and in particular the extent to which it determines the nature of one's influence on and experience of others, is the subject of this book. To give you an idea of what's at stake, consider the following analogy. An infant is learning how to crawl. She begins by pushing herself backwards around the house. Backing herself around, she gets lodged beneath the furniture. There she thrashes about, crying and banging her little head against the sides and undersides of the pieces. She's stuck and hates it. So she does the only thing she can think of to get herself out. She pushes even harder, which only worsens her problem. She's more stuck than ever. If this infant could talk, she would blame the furniture for her troubles. After all, she's doing everything she can think of. The problem couldn't be hers, but, of course, the problem is hers, even though she can't see it. While it's true that she's doing everything she can think of, the problem is precisely that she can't see how she's the problem. Having the problem she has, nothing she can think of will be a solution. Self-deception is like this. It blinds us to the true causes of problems, and once we're blind, all the solutions we can think of will actually make matters worse. Whether at work or at home, self-deception obscures the truth about ourselves, corrupts our view of others and our circumstances, and inhibits our ability to make wise and helpful decisions. To the extent that we are self-deceived, both our happiness and our leadership are undermined at every turn, and not because of the furniture. We have written this book to educate people about a solution to this most central of problems. Our experience in teaching about self-deception and its solution is that people find this knowledge liberating. It sharpens vision, reduces feelings of conflict, enlivens the desire for teamwork, redoubles accountability, magnifies the capacity to achieve results, and deepens satisfaction and happiness. This is true whether we're sharing these ideas with corporate executives in New York, governmental leaders in Beijing, community activists on the West Bank, or parenting groups in Brazil. Members of every culture participate to one degree or another in their own individual and cultural self-deceptions. The discovery of a way out of those self-deceptions is the discovery of hope and the birth of new possibilities and lasting solutions. This book was first published in 2000. This is the new third edition, published in 2018. The text has been updated, and we have added new sections at the end that describe research into the magnitude of self-deception in organizations, how to measure the extent of self-deception in organizations, and various uses people have made of the book and its ideas over the nearly two decades since it was first published. Initially, some readers are surprised to find that the book unfolds as a story. Although fictional, the characters' experiences are drawn from our own and our clients' actual experiences. So the story rings true, and most readers tell us they see themselves in it. Because of this, the book delivers not just conceptual, but also practical understanding of the problem of self-deception and its solution.